It's crazy that we call someone who betrays their friends a rat, because rats are actually highly empathetic and selfless. Scientists have known for years that rats will go out of their way to free other rats who are held in a restraining device or trapped in a pool of water. When rats had the option to rescue another rat or eat chocolate, more than half the time they chose to rescue the other rat first and then share the chocolate rather than keeping it all for themselves. Rats rescue each other even if they don't know the other rat and even if they have no opportunity to interact after freeing them, so they aren't just selfishly motivated by a desire for social interaction. They are also extra motivated to rescue another rat in distress if they have previously been in the same predicament themselves and know what it feels like. And they will even avoid pressing a lever to get food if they see that doing so causes another rat to get an electric shock. Unfortunately, a lot of my fellow scientists don't seem to see the perverse irony in subjecting rats to physical and psychological suffering in order to study how empathetic they are. In one experiment, researchers implanted metal tubes into rat skulls and injected drugs into their brain to try to figure out which part of the brain is responsible for empathy. Three of the rats died during or shortly after the surgery, and after the experiment, the researchers killed all the rats to dissect their brains. And this type of experiment is nothing unusual. If anything, it's fairly tame compared to a lot of neuroscience research. I think it's time we start showing rats some of the empathy that they show each other. Instead of experimenting on them, we can shift federal funding towards research that doesn't use animals. And instead of killing them with poisons that cause them to die a slow and agonizing death from internal bleeding, we can use more humane methods of population control, like contraceptive bait. Follow for more content about animal intelligence and ethics.